Hello folks, as I promised you, I said I would do another Mark 1 video and this time we're going to focus on the electrical issues that these cars may have. Now, these cars very rarely have electrical issues, but usually when they happen, it's not particularly easy to diagnose, but I'm going to show you some areas where you can eliminate problems and areas that you need to know about. Right, we're going to start from the driver's seat. Um, in the Mark 1, there are two fuse boxes, one in the engine bay and one under the behind the glove box in the uh, passenger compartment. Um, there is also the ECU, which is located where my foot is, beyond there. And you have the central locking module right next to it. Over here, underneath the console, you have the airbag module. There are very few um, modules apart from that. You may get something for the rear parking sensors on certain cars, particularly if it's an aftermarket uh, version, but there aren't many other things around. Anyway, what I'm going to show you is this. And it is called the secret menu. You may not be aware of it. Now, I did the wrong thing there, which is activated by pushing the pointer for about five seconds or so and then you turn the ignition on and it should say test all the dials will do a sweep and you're in the test menu and i'll show you that now i've just taken my finger off that point it said test take it off and then the gauges will do a sweep it says gauge just test it's just a case of testing the gauges and then the next one i'll go through bulbs Check your bulbs, so it would tell you if you any bulbs are out. So we've got a couple. I don't have that. I don't have a diesel. I don't have ABS. <laughs> a couple of them are not applicable. But still, not sure what that one is. Some of them are not identifiable. They're only, they're only people that Ford, they're only things that Ford techs understand. There's nothing in the DTC. I believe... Right, that is the fuel, uh, oh God. Yeah, that is the average fuel level in the tank. That is the low level. And believe you me, 35, look how low the gauge is, right? We're just above empty. That, the, the um, warning light will, the low fuel warning light will come on when it says LO25. And believe you me, I actually did a test where I, I know it was crazy to do this, but I actually ran it to almost zero and it was still running. So clearly I've got a very clean tank. That's Fahrenheit. That is the temperature of the engine. That is the coolant temperature sensor which sits between the plugs. That's what it's telling the car. That is how you tell your temperature. So if you don't trust this gauge, have a look at this gauge. But you'll have to turn the car off to go into this test run. There's all sorts of different ones here. But basically you get the picture. Don't know what these are. And we eventually get back to the start. There we go. Gauge. Done. Balls. Done. So if you want some extra information like the fuel level... If there's any code stored, the DTC, as I showed you, your bulbs, whether the gauges work, and the temperature of the car. The temperature one is the one I've used the most when I did a load of um, temperature checks last year um, after doing an antifreeze flush. Put it this way, my car would have been driving around 98, 99 degrees, which is pretty good for these cars. After I flushed the antifreeze out and put new stuff in, it will barely, and a new thermostat, it barely goes above 4, 93, 94 now, which was amazing. It just showed me the difference between doing a flush and not. Radios, they tend to work or they tend not to work. Uh, they can sometimes lose their pixels uh, and just cease altogether. Or the main common item is they do not tune so you're seeking a radio station and just keeps on seeking and seeking and it can't pick up anything that's your usual giveaway
Not as common as other cars on this age with a digital clock, but sometimes I've seen that the clocks can actually lose digits, but it is quite a rare thing if it does happen and they're easy to change. Access to the passenger fuse box is gained by dropping that sh little shock absorber thing and pushing the rubbers in and then the glove box drops. And here we have, we have access to the fan, uh, passenger fuse box, the heater blower, and the heater resistor, which is down there, where those wires go down, that, where that uh, clips in. Okay, that's held in with the wiring and a single Phillips screw. It's very easy to replace. Again, the heater, heater is easy to replace, the heater fan motor, you just need to drop it down the bottom. There's a trim panel you need to take off, but it's pretty easy if, they pack, if it packs up. Check the fuse beforehand. Now, as we can see, we've got the passenger fuse box. We have some relays up there that are protected by this shield. If you want to take the shield off, take those little bolts out, okay? There's two there, there might be one up there. But basically, I had an issue ages ago where my front wipers would not park. Now, the fuse that you're looking at, the, the relay you're looking at is this one. That's the, I think that's the rear wiper, that's the front wiper, or vice versa, I can't remember which one it was. But basically the front wipers would not park and everybody told me, oh, it's a relay issue. So what I did is I tried the trick where you actually reverse the front, the rear wiper relay with the front one. So I switched them over and the front wipers now park perfectly and the rear wiper is unaffected. So I don't know what the problem was there, but I've just swapped them over. They are interchangeable, by the way. Um, the yellow one is a battery saver, so for your lights, etc. So if your lights aren't... Um, I think it's somewhat to do with the lights turning off and turning on when you shut the doors. If you notice there's timing issues, it could be that one. Um, not quite sure about these two. There's another one on the right, but very rarely give they, they give problems. Um, as you can see, I've got many fuses in this car that are unused. Now, there's a top tip I've got for you. Check this fuse box particularly, because when I got this car... And I looked at the Haynes manual and the handbook because I've got the, hand, the original uh, handbook in this wallet. If some of you have got one of them, my fuse box, my fuses were all over the place. Um, I'm not sure why. Some of them were the incorrect ratings as well. Um, some I had obviously typically you have fuses for things you don't have. That's just the way they put them together in the factory. They just, you know, put a fuse for the ABS, even though that car's got no ABS. They just stick them in. But mine had a load of wrong fuses in it. Now that could have been down to what you know previous owners or previous mechanics working on it. I don't know, but I think it's wise if you get a focus or if you've got one and you haven't checked, check these fuses. If you've got Haynes manual or the handbook, check against them both and make sure they're the correct ones. You've got all the runs needed. It is quite important. If you've got the wrong fuse for the wrong item, you could have some serious issues. Um, so just check that fuse box and I've, I've taken a load out that I don't need and I've got them as spares so you might want to do that as well. Now as I said to you before the central locking um, module is located next to the ECU. I don't think I can quite get it in the picture. Mm, sort of. It's down there right next to the ECU. You'll see it. Um, I think it's here. I think it's somewhere there actually. Uh, I think it's to the right hand side of the ECU. But basically, with that module, um, if you have issues with keys, then it could be the central locking module. Um, if you have a low spec model like a CL, there are different modules for different specs. So CLs, LXs, ZTEX gears, they will all have different central locking modules. For instance, the central locking module in a gear is capable of global closing of the windows, right? That is, that is part of the central locking uh, system and um, basically you can't on a ZTEC you'll have a much more basic module that's not capable of doing global closing because the module just doesn't have the actual uh, capabilities but if you wanted if you have a ZTEC with five doors and you wanted global closing there's a simple way of going about that you just get the module out of your ZTEC Get a gear central locking module. There are parts numbers that you need to be aware of. So you need, you'll need to do a bit of research. The part numbers are very different. Um, but if you can get one out of a gear with global closing and swap them over, it will be a simple case of programming the keys. 
Now, the, it's an easy it's an easy technique to do, actually. You have to put the key in the ignition a couple of times and then open and close the door a couple of times. There's a, it's a more specific procedure than that, but it's basically that procedure, and then your keys can be used for the central locking. Uh, the, the, the module will recognise the keys. So that's just a little tip there, but they really, really go wrong. Usually central locking issues are related to the module in the driver's door because this is the master switch, whether it's a three door or five door. Um, if that doesn't work, then the central locking isn't going to work on that side. Now there is a particular problem I've got with my car. Oh no, it's working. Now sometimes it doesn't do that. When the car's been standing in the cold for a couple of days, it doesn't link up side to side, but it, today it's decided to. Now that for me, I think is the central locking module. It's always been like that in this car, and a lot of your cars may be exactly the same as mine, but it's just something to be aware of. They don't quite link up. This is a delay. There we go. Now the next thing to denote are these micro switches in the doors. Now that can cause particular issues. On the dashboard, you should have a door open sign. If I just put the key into the ignition, we can actually see the light. Right, it's up there, top right, okay? Doors open. Now if I put my finger on this switch, it goes straight out. Now what was happening before was that light wasn't even coming on. I'd open the door, ignition's on, and that light wouldn't be on but the door's open. And what I found was this switch had gotten mangled. Somebody had really slammed the door before I bought it and it was absolutely mangled. No wonder it wasn't working. I had to just get a second hand one and I've had no issues since. But there was another particular issue with that and this is why I decided to look into this. Because that light wasn't on, the, the car wasn't recognizing that the door was open. So the warning chime wasn't on because if I put the headlights on, well done. I need to uh, get the keys out. There we go. Now that should happen when the ignition is off and the headlights are on, but that wasn't happening. And there was one point where I actually parked the car up, left the headlights on, forgot to turn them off, went away, came back to a dead car, and that was because the warning chime didn't go on as you heard, because that warning chime operates with that light. If that light isn't on and the ignition's off, it things are, oh, the doors are closed, no problem. So that light, so when you left the headlights on, it drained the battery and obviously the car's not recognizing it and it doesn't chime you. So it could be down to that. So check that they both work all the doors. Another top tip, if you're having problems with the actual central locking in the doors, yes, it could be the motor. This could need cleaning in, okay? So get some, um, not WD-40, get some white spirit, some brake clean, get it in because there's grease and all sorts of gunge here. Sometimes you might have to take the door card off and really have a good clean inside. Um, I thought that was the best thing for mine and I've had little issues since I did that. But sometimes you can just twist this wiring loom off okay take it off give it a bit of a contact clean put it back on twist it on and sometimes you'll find your issues go away it could be just dirty contacts it's very easy to just twist it off that's a top tip also really important note because not everybody knows this earth points there are two earth points underneath this carpet. You pry up this trim and get this carpet off. There are two earth points down here. They can relate to the central locking and a number of other items. Take them off, clean them up. Mine certainly needed cleaning. There's also one at the corner exactly on the same end. Okay, these are important earth points. Clean them up. Window regulators, yes, they sometimes fail, but it's usually the driver's one that fails. I've never seen a passenger one. I've very rarely seen a passenger one that fails. It's always the driver's ones. Um, but there, there's so many aftermarket ones out there, it's not an issue. Okay, going into the boot, the main issue is to check that this wiring loom is not broken. If you've got any issues with the backlights, the rear wiper, the heated screen, uh, the, the tailgate release from the fob or from the switch in the car. 
check this wiring loom. You can get replacements. I think there's some kits you can buy where they've basically got um, crimps on them, so you can just crimp it, uh, some spade connectors on and connect it back in. If you want to solder it up, well, you're going to have to take the whole thing out of the door. Uh, that's going to be a, a real pain. Uh, sometimes you can get like there are spare looms you can get a loom that connects underneath the headlining all the way into the tailgate if you want to buy an entire loom I'm sure they're out there on eBay I've certainly got a spare one just in case but touch wood I've had no issue now light bad earths on the lights on these or the high level ones right basically we have an earth point down here as you show you it's there, right? There's an earth point down here, okay, where my finger is. Clean that, because often that is the problem with uh, any issues with the back lights. It is an earth for quite a few things, including the reverse lights at the bottom, the fog lights, so check that. If you have a car with ABS, sometimes the sensors can pack up, but they're easy enough changed as long as the bolts are not completely seized into the hubs. Uh, but apart from that there shouldn't be any wiring problems with the ABS and of course we have the heated front windscreen which everybody now has copied they can work only on one side they can work on neither side so if you want to get the windscreen replaced then you'd have to probably go through the insurance but in general they either work completely or on one side sometimes they just don't work at all but it's the way it is there's nothing you can really do about it and we come around here to the engine bay of which there can be quite a few issues probably the majority of the issues happen in here and it is purely down to earths now i'm going to tell you now down here there should be two earths one here and um, there should be one here but it snapped off that earth is now here good job Ford provided some extra earth ports I wonder if they actually realized that would happen but be very very careful with the earth down here I didn't even bother drilling it out I could have done I might I might do that in the future and move that back to its original spot but it's absolutely fine now it's nice and clean clean that clean that that's half your issues sorted clean the battery terminals as well also clean where the starter motor goes at the starter motor cables actually go onto the front of the starter because that is also um, quite a few issues this um, weather shield doesn't really stop the weather getting in at all clean that as well this is the earth clamp for the alternator they can get dirty as well even with that cap over it I've found that they get a bit furred up over here we have the fuse box okay it's very simple I've still got the spare fuses in there. There is a fuse diagram, um, but oh, I've never been in here. There's very rare, very rarely um, things go wrong. On the automatic models, a lot of the wiring goes over the gearbox, and you can't really see it because it kind of is it's kind of down here. But basically just check that the wiring is not rubbing against any of the hoses or anything like that because uh, they can chafe. If you suspect that your fan motor isn't working or kicking in when it should, there's an easy test. You just take that plug out from the temperature sensor which sits between the, pl the plugs, take it out and that fan should cut in instantly. If it doesn't, you know you've got a dead fan check that this doesn't break these wires can frequently break off this clip i have actually got a load of spare ones that i've cut from a, a scrapyard car for this very reason there and the coil pack at the back there the wires going to it can also fray there is also another earth point on the chassis rail here clean that up as well i've cleaned it and then painted over it just to give it a bit of protection Heated washer jets, a fantastic item, even though you don't know they're working half the time. They can break, and they usually break where they go through into um, the actual car. Now, originally, the wires went down there, but I've rewired it so it actually links up 
this way i've actually had to rewire it because the wires just broke and they usually break where they actually attach the bonnet with the opening and closing the bonnet the wires get old hard fragile and then they just split there so you won't know they're not working because the idea of the heated washer jets is that they just stop the washer jets from freezing in the winter uh, in conjunction when you press the heated windscreen they are uh, working then so they assume if your windscreen's frozen your washer jets will be frozen so it's the only time they're going to ever work there is another earth point just here where my finger is just here okay make sure that's nice and tight and nice and cleaned up i actually did a video um on the common items in the engine bay department and actually realized after filming there's my earth connector was completely disconnected that's just so weird it connects i don't know if you can see it my fingers just there that's where it connects to the body onto the engine okay just make sure they're completely connected one last major thing and it is a service item recommendation change your spark plugs okay if you don't change your spark plugs there is a huge risk that if you've got an original coil pack um, or even these newer style ones I wouldn't want to take the risk they can go and spark and surge because of these plugs usually they crack but when they go they surge and it could spike the ECU and there have been many cases in the past of coil packs spiking the ECU and then you need your ECU repairing heated rear screens now I am very lucky this is the third tailgate for many reasons that this car has now had in its life and it's the best one because Almost all the lines work apart from possibly one up here in a certain spot. That's it. That's very rare. Most of the time, you'll get a few not working. If you want to repair it, there are kits. I think Granville do a kit where you it's, it's your, literally a pen and you go over on the inside very carefully with some masking tape. But if you want the original look, don't do that because the colour is actually white and these are orange. So if unless you want it to be functional and not be great in terms of appearance then go right ahead but if you want if you care about appearance don't worry about it they all they all fail eventually i'm pretty sure there are more things that i've not covered here um but in truth this is the majority of the issues that i've experienced there may be more uh, electrical maladies but usually it is down to bad earths so i would suggest that all the earths that i've pointed out so the two on the driver's side sill, the one on the passenger side sill, the one at the back of the boot, the ones in the engine bay, the two near the battery, one on the passenger side, the one on the engine block that I uh, found was disconnected the one time. Doesn't matter. I had that disconnected and it still ran, so there was plenty enough air for it to go around. But the point is, make sure all of them are clean and good, but be very careful with the engine bay ones because they can snap like I found out one day. So I am going to leave you there with that piece of information. Most of it you may already be aware about because these are quite common issues. But as I say, I'm dealing with the common issues, not the rare ones. Um, so I will see you very soon, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.